So um, the chapter, as we can see, is time series, um, which basically, um, you know, given data based on some kind of fixed frequency according to some rules, right? Uh, maybe the rules, maybe like every second, every day, every hour, you know. And um, there are different ways to represent the data, which they talk about number one, timestamps, specific instant in time. So, like we can say, um, you know, um, an hour, seconds, you know, that's the timestamps, or it can be fixed period. Um, you know, we can say from this year to this, or intervals of time indicated by this, or experiment stuff like that. But um, the made mention, like the simplest one is, um, data that has been indexed by timestamp. So that's one of the easiest way uh, to do that. And the good thing, as you say, like pandas now provide many built-in time series tools. So it's like a good thing, like, um, you know, pandas provide this and uh, one can do them off the shelf. So this is an example. They started trying the first one that Python has a built-in, you know, dead time object, dead time, um, you know, module that we can do and it contains a lot of stuff for well, here we can see like um, it can show us you know the time which is now it can show all the year you know all these you know um you know now the months and the day by having this object so um this i think is it that um you know the kind of things you used to do uh with the date time because you said like dependence yeah okay yeah. right so um, you can see like um, dead time store, uh, you know, uh, up to microseconds. So we can see here, like um, uh, we can do a lot of other things like, you know, subtractions. Um, we can see here even up to the second, but um, we can see if we get this, um, we can see like the first thing is year, month, day, I mean, hour, minute, second, microsecond and time zone information, right? So these are some of the um, information needed for that. Um, uh, we can see given this, um, we can find the days. So when we do subtraction here, we can see this is the days. And when we do see the second, this is it. Um, but also you can do, um, you know, many other things like addition and other stuff. So here we can see uh, we do addition, you know, start. This is the time start and we do addition with 12. So we can see here like um, we have 19, 7 plus 12, we have 19. And because like it has the second and millisecond is all zero, zero. So that's why we have here, but we can also do subtraction, right? So here we have the start, which is basically in 2011. And we can see here, we do subtraction. So here minus this, so minus time delta two of times two, which is 24. So we can say like um, 2011, because here is a January seven. So if we go back minus 24 days, it can give us, 2010, 2011, and 12, which is December and 14 by subtracting those days. So you can do a lot of other stuff with this time um, stop. Um, so one may be, uh, may be interested to basically combine, you know, um, between string and date time to do this kind of conversion. So um, here we have, um, you know, a stamp, which is basically the uh, object for time so let's look at it yeah so we can see the timestamp and we can just you know call this object string on this object and it gives us like a string object uh or we can call this string time string f time and given this kind of you know format you want is going so this is in some ways people sometimes need to have their date in uh, string format so this is useful for that um so um you can use many um you know of the same format code to combust string to date using date time strap um you know that's what i showed there um there are different kind of way you want to show the object um yep but now we see that um you can do this stuff with the time but um, pandas also uh you know um come with a lot of um other stuff that one can work with uh, regarding the time series. Uh, so we have pandas to get time method that pass different kind of date representation uh, to object. So we can see here we have our own, you know, we can see we have this stuff. 
like you know you can see uh in this format and we can call this on top of it and now it can convert it to you know um dead time stuff so yeah that's the basically about the date time object um from python um so here they discuss about some basics of um you know time series um now here we can see we have um a data um a series here we can see the index is um you know in some ways is basically uh <clears throat> uh date time index so here we can see we have the time you know the year the month the time and this is it and now under the hood these index are basically you know date time index so they are not normal index as we know when we create a data frame or series so we can see here when we call the index it gives us the time index rather than the normal pandas um you know uh series uh, index we saw um right so this is basically just series and everything we do in pandas we can normally do them also with these you know um time series object so for example here we can do indexing and this one you know uh, give us object and um, every other object it skips so we can see we have you know these these so it can give us um you know the first one is uh, which one is this Is it different object I can see? Four. Mm -hmm. Let me run this guy. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's, um, we can see here this is the first one, and now it skips um this one and give us so something like that. Every other one. So. We can see that and you can also do any other operation like addition so we can see here this object that we subset here it has different in index you know and what happened if we said this guy this object plus this object so pandas we do you know matching with um you know with the index even though it's dead time index so it will automatically those that are not available it will full, not have uh, any and um so one thing we should also know the chapter discussed about you know the pandas um store time stuff using numpy you know dead times 64 data type which has even up to nanoseconds so um, looking at the data type for the index here we can see is something called um you know dead time uh data type m8 nanosecond i haven't even seen this kind of data type to at least today because i'm not used to time series um yeah so that's one thing we should know um um about the data type for the uh, index uh for that okay um so we can also you know index a single object um from the data frame um yeah so now we have seen like um you know pandas uh python has this object dead time and now pandas has something called timestamp so are they really um, can we use each in place of any other ones? So that's um, you know something that we should know. The book says um, you know we can basically use timestamps in place of you know dead time object, but the other way cannot be used because you know the timestamp uh, you know is different object. It's used to store those nanosecond, but you know the time uh, the dead time uh actually uh does not store information in that sense so um yeah that's the idea for that um okay so the here they talk about um you know index and selection and subset of you know um the object in time series uh here we have um an object uh, a series object here and we can look up um doing the indexing so um here basically we can index two and it can give us um which update the third one right here this one so more or less the way we know the python indexing um here we can see we index um you know subset uh you know um this object um the sum and it gives us the value which is zero minus 0 0.5 something like this um yeah so Okay, we you we can also give the you know the index value um just the way we do indexing in Python and it can give us this. 
um, for longer time series, <clears throat> a year or only a year and month can be passed um, and can easily do the selection. So what this means is that um, we can see we have these, you know, uh, you know, we have this, you know, object, <clears throat> and we can have basically says, uh, you know, we can see like 2000, 2000, you know, maybe we have from 2000 to, you know, uh, 2022. So we want to select only, um, you know, data with, you know, from 2000 or 2001. So we can use only 2001 and it can, uh, this uh, timestamp can, you know, pick only, um, you know, index that is from two, um, 2001. Um, but we can also say, okay, but not only 2001, but we, we need like uh, from which month, 2001 and, you know, all five, we can, you know, put this and it can basically go and, you know, filter all those low. Um, yeah, so you can also do slicing with this stuff. Um, we can see here, we give the first um, time object we need and we said this give us the rest. So it would just start, um, you know, uh, from here until the end. So more or less the way we do exactly the time, you know, slicing. Um, we can also do this thing, this something and say, okay, start from here and, you know, stop from here. So we can see here 2011, um, if we look at the TS object, if we look at the TS object, so 2011-17, 2011-17, which is this, and the other one, 2011-10, which is this, right? Okay, uh, yep. So we can see like it give us only this, you know, this value. So we can do this kind of uh, slicing of the data. Um, but also um, you can do slicing based on, you know, uh, ranges. So we can see that, um, you know, sometimes you may need to say, okay, give me between data between this date and this date, right? So you can slice all like, um, you know, um, uh, given this uh, something like this. So you can do like this uh, because these are some, some kind of ranges, but here you can give the exact date you want. So this is still the some something. Um, so um, they also discuss about something, a method called truncate that basically um, allows you to do some kind of slicing in some efficient way. And so given us uh, this data frame, um, this you know, um, series, maybe we can say, okay, uh, give me a data frame from here and truncate everything below. So this is a method, truncate. So after here, um, you know, give me anything after this date, right? So we can see here 2011, you know, um, 09, which is this, uh, what, what the TS. I cannot see this. Okay, let me run this guy again. Okay. Uh, I cannot see this. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see this. Okay, so um, so we said after this, and it gave us this O two O five. Is this yeah? Oh, that's correct. So we can see like it truncates everything, you know, after this date. So we have only this, you know, data before this. So it does some kind of truncation. Um, but you can also, you know, uh, give, you know, the starting and the end, um, you know, and it will truncate everything that is not between there. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, a good function to do that. Um, but you can also supply, you know, uh, you can see like, uh, okay, uh, let me see this. Okay, so you can see like there is, if we look at the truncate function, basically it does have before and after. Um, that allow once to specify what uh, you, where you want to do a truncation. So we can do, for example, this is a pandas data frame. We can say, okay, before this and after this, truncate everything. And we can see here before two, what is before two, uh, this guy, you know, and after four and um, this guy, it will just truncate them. So it will truncate this and the top one, and we have only this. So this is a good function to actually allow or want to do some kind of 
uh, you know, slicing and yeah. Hey, Leila, how are you? Do you opportunity to read the chapter? <laughs> hey, Sham. Um, no, I didn't read the chapter. <laughs> okay, me too. I just started reading at the last hour. Um, you know, so I read some part of it and say, hey, um, because we don't have any presenter, um, let me just jump in. And uh, I read the half of the chapter, not all the chapters, so we can, yeah. So, yeah, that's annoying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so here we have time series with duplicate, right? So we know um, in pandas, we have, you know, those kind of, you know, um, functions, unique and everything that allow us to remove those duplicate. But also in time series, you know, the timestamps can be duplicate. And when you query this, you can have many multiple results, different results. So this is an example of this. So we can see here all these, um, you know, uh, with timestamp, timestamp, they are duplicate, right? Um, so how can you make sure whether your, uh, you know, uh, is duplicate? So we can use this is unique. Um, you call on this index and it shows you uh, if it is unique or not. Um, right, um, but this is unique. It did also, um, it, is this um, what I don't know, like is this um, also true for normal pandas data frame on top of its index or is only for these uh that's what i don't know um, what was the question um this is unique um we can see it shows us if um an index we have yeah. unique index it says false if we don't have unique in the, if we have unique in this, it will say true because here it's not unique, you know? Yeah. Oh, you, so, you can use it for any series, not just time series, not okay. just indexes either, but yeah. any time series you can use it. Yeah, okay. So um, so here we can see like we wanna index one date here because uh, we are indexing, um, you know, um, this one, which is unique. It, it gave us only the value, right? But what about if we index these with, you know, um, you know, duplicate, it give us, you know, uh, multiple data. So uh, we should know like um, uh, how to do that. But also if you have such kind of duplicate, sometimes you want to do operations based on that date. So many operations on that date because you, you have duplicate, you need to group by so that you can do some kind of, uh, yeah. So this is something Leila taught us last week, um, group by and we can see here, we can go by by the level, which is zero, which is the index. And now you can do many, you know, um, whether you want to do mean, you want to do count. So here, when we do group by level zero, and it means we group by the index, and now we can take the mean of the index. So um, when we take the mean of the index, so we take the mean of these guys, because we do group by, right? So we take the mean of these guys, and this will give us, you know, so, um, yep. So that's uh, the mean. We can see the mean of the last one is 4.0 because we have only one uh, zero three this day. All this one also the mean will be zero because we have only one, but this one, the mean will be adding this and find the mean. So we do group by, you know, and also we can do some stuff. So the main idea here is like, they wanna tell us like you are doing time series stuff. Um, you may have duplicate entries um, index. So one good thing is, you know, if you want to do some kind of summary statistic for us, you need to do some kind of this group by and, you know, do summary on them. Yep. Um, Leila, you want to add something? Because I know you are the one that did <laughs> the group by chapter. <laughs> Not really. I mean, it okay. makes sense. Okay. So, um, yeah, so generating dates range so um so um pandas brings um you know uh, we know in time series um the data may be uh, the data you have some kind of index based on date so time series um pandas come with a function called date range that allows you to generate range of dates so we can see here date range and um we can see here uh, one of the argument is like the start of the date, you know, um, you can have the end of the date, right? Um, you know, yeah, so let's look at how it works. So by default, pandas date range generate daily timestamps. 
uh, if you pass only a start and date. Um, so we can see here we provide this start and we provide the end. So by default, it will generate, you know, uh, uh, you know, 0401, 0402, you know, three. So by default, it just do this. But you can pass um, only a start or ended, and you must uh, provide the number. So if I want to say just start from here, and I don't want to say get, this is the end date, but like I want to 20, right? So you can just provide the period so we can see. Um, yeah, so you can see like the period is integer. Um, yeah, so period into number of period to generate, right? So yeah, this will generate the stuff. And we can see like something here, frequency, it's a D. So this D is telling us like a day, daily, right? I think, yeah, daily. So um, it's telling you this is a series that um, with, uh, you know, pandas uh, date uh, time object, but it, um, the uh, type is, uh, the frequency, frequency is daily. Um, yeah, so this one is also like, uh, you know, the end and you can specify, but you can provide the, you know, period. So we, when we provide the end, which is this 2012-0601, we can see this is the end, but we said it should give us like 20, right? So it can go reverse, right? So you can see this is the last date, um, uh, first date of 0601, but it can go back, you know, 0531, you know, and it can come. So these are some of the, you know, um, many cool functions that um, people that are working on you know time series may find them useful but this is my first encounter to be honest with all these time series stuff um i didn't even you know uh <laughs> yeah only this like an hour um that i started reading the chapter so yeah um there are many other things like um um you know you can do so we can see here it, we just give like sequence of date you know next date next date but you can do like um, other thing you know uh for example here uh business day of each month so business day of each month you can specify the category so here we can see 0131 um you know two, two. um to be honest i don't know what is the meaning of business day of each month i don't know i don't know the english bm frequency business end of the month this just means the last day that is actually a business day like usually it's monday through friday not the weekends so the last day was a Saturday. We'll give you the Friday, the last business day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Otherwise known as payday. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Right. Mm. Okay. Um. Right. Oh. Okay. So this B is I think business day. So here we have zero one zero three zero one zero four zero one zero five. But what this one B M. Um, we can see here it gives us the last date of the month, business end of the month. Oh, business end of month. Business end yeah, of so month. Yeah, so it's not the actual end of the month. I mean, most of these look like they are the actual end of the month. But so which one is it. business end of month? It's going to be the last business day in the month. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this is a business day. Okay. All right. And we can specify like the you can see hour. So we can see like a uh, range. We have different kind of parameters. Um, if we talk about the rain, um, anyway, okay. So like H is an hour, so you can see like this one. We give this is the start, you know, this is the end, but the frequency is should repeat. You know, you can see like this is the on the hour, you know, um, you know, blah, 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 blah. this is like one hour, you know, two hours, you know. So these are some of the you know uh, stuff um, uh, useful for time series data manipulation. Um, um, week of the month. So this is also another uh, stuff. Uh, okay. Um, so let's look at another one, which they talk about the book, which is time zone handling. So time zone handling basically, um, you know, we all know like working with time zone can be somehow confusing, um, or um python uh or pandas brings um one of the uh functions as a built-in in pandas that allow us to deal with you know um you know time uh zone which is called pi tz tz or pi tz functionality which is you know wrapped in pandas so um 
you need not to install the you know the function but um you know uh, when you install the funders is there um so we can have these um you know when we import the and we call call um you know the common time zone so these are common time zones we do have like africa Accra, africa you know bamako you know all this stuff so these are some of the common you know times uh you know uh <clears throat> Yeah, so this give us some stuff like this. Um, but you can also give, you know, uh, you know, the time, um, you know, the time zone here. So here I can run this guy and I can see uh the time zone America, New York. It can give me um yeah. So the and old by the way, I did check this. Um because with my state, Arizona, we don't have daylight savings time and it does correctly handle that. It doesn't oh it doesn't that's pretty cool, I thought. Oh, <laughs> nice. Right. So, um, but um, it is all doing the reference to UTC. So this is something that uh, we should know. Okay, cool. Um, right. So times of localization and conversion. So sometimes we may have, um, you know, data in that one time zone and we want to convert it to another, you know, uh, time zone. So this is an example of um, data, you know, in, you know, um, um, uh, normal data we can see, and uh, we want to see like the time zone it is. So by default, tenders um, time series at time, they don't have any time zone, right? So um, when we have this trying to find the index, so this TZ um, allow us to check the time zone. So because we already import this guy, um, you know, this guy. So this tell us this is known, meaning there is no time zone. But, um, you know, we can uh, create um, series or whatsoever at the time by providing a time zone on the creation. So here we can see we just create, you know, some index, you know, uh, normal series. But here we want to do range, date range, and we provide the, you know, the time uh, uh, the time zone here. Um, so we can see like uh, it it tells us everything and it returns also the time and, you know, UTC it gives you, you know, and also it gives you the frequency, right? Um, or like this uh, tenders, you know, um, um, even though it's used in dates uh, because the index is dates, because remember here we have dates. Um, if you look at this, time, the dates is here. Um, we can see this is dates, and now when we create this as pandas series, and we give the index to be this date, so pandas will look up this as uh, kind of you know this date time stuff, and you can see like it even tells you the frequencies. This is not so uh, normal like uh, pandas series, but time series series, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, so one can do some kind of conversions uh, to basically you know. Uh, time uh, locations, all right. So here we can see we have, um, you know, um, uh, UTC. Okay, uh, okay. Let's see what this guy does. So here we have this. Okay, um, but I think here there is no times. TS localized. So here we already have, you know, this series, but there is no. Uh, localization, right? Um, so when we call this guy, and now let's look at it. So, uh, blah, 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 blah. okay, so now we can see here, does it make any difference between this guy and this? Yep, so I think it added something. So let's look at the time uh, index, so uh, UTC, yep. So TS UTC, the index, um, we can see calling the index, it tells us, yep, it is UTC. So this is um, a localized function that allows one to uh, basically uh, uh, give something to, yeah. So you can also do uh, convert. So uh, allow you to do uh, conversion from a particular time zone, yeah. So all this one are convert, you know, are convert. Um, yep. Yeah. All right, so I think um this is where I stopped in this chapter. I didn't even go further. So 
Um, yeah, so I think that's what I got uh, from the chapter. And um, I think, uh, uh, yep. So we have seen like um, how one can basically generate, uh, you know, deal with uh, creating time series data and you can do slicing, you can, you know, do conversions and yeah, a lot of other stuff. Um, yeah, so that's what I got, uh, Ron. Have you managed to go, um, you know, down the chapter? Yeah, I did finish it. Uh, a question for you, by the way. This is so these you took the. Um, it looks like to me, correct me wrong. You took the Python notebook from Jupyter notebook from the mm -hmm. GitHub, and then you added yes. notes as you went along. Is that yes. what you do? Yes. I'm gonna start doing that. That's smart. <laughs> I you just read it? and I go back and then I mess and then I rush through the notebook. I should just have the notebook open. That's much smarter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so. The the, the remainder the yeah I, I like that that's good yeah the remainder of the chapter um yeah. spends a little bit of time on periods which is another type of thing besides timestamps which represents both a start and an end mm -hmm. which apparently I, they didn't really make the case for why you'd want to use periods versus timestamps so i didn't understand that necessarily okay um, i guess there's some things you can't do with the periods like won't it, does prevent you from doing things like merging them in certain ways if they overlap, but which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, um, Leila, have you used yeah, time series data before? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, um, no, I okay. I never have a need to use time series data. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's why many people like haven't volunteered because they are not into time series. Because like, if there are many people that are interested or working on time series, they have already volunteered. So maybe people have not been working on time series stuff. Yeah, probably. Um, oddly, though, I had to do an, a coding assessment recently for an internship, and one of their problems was to develop a forecasting model. But, and like create I was like no I was so mad I really was because I was like who does this on the regular I had to like start googling stuff and it was a timed assessment wow and I just, it seemed so unfair because you would literally have to be have had experience like working in the, a certain domain or project for a while to be able to yeah just yeah a forecasting yeah. model uh -huh. yeah so for example if somebody is working for text you know, time series, I, I think it's just like a niche, right? Um, you know, uh, area where some people do that, if you have, yeah. but it's not like general thing that people, you know, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, why couldn't they ask me to do like, I don't know, <laughs> TF idea. <laughs> 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 that would have been better. Yeah, so yeah, so next week we're gonna have Isabella to do the next chapter. And I think the last chapter, um, I volunteer my name. I think I will uh, present the last chapter as well. Um, yeah. The last chapter looks like it's rather long too, by the way. I just wanted Which to one? question you on that. You might. The last the one? The last, the very last chapter on the modeling examples. Mm -hmm. It seems rather long. I don't know. Uh, I have the print, oh, I have the print book. It's, relatively thick <laughs> well the modeling introduction is relatively short but the, the modeling examples mm -hmm. okay. yeah. long. i don't know don't look examples, that long the, don't look that long in the yeah so i guess that's true so you go through them pretty quickly that's a good point yeah, yeah and they're probably now that i'm looking at it, it's mostly tables and charts and stuff so okay yeah it's not a lot of thoughts mostly tables exactly exactly like he tends to go through the examples in like extra detail in my opinion and you can take away the points fairly quickly. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah. yeah. And, and the reading the rest of it, the only real issue I had was, again, like I said, just understanding when you would use a period and when you would use a time stamp first. And I, you know, uh, I think I just did some Googling. It looks like the answer to that is basically use periods when that makes sense in your domain where it really matters whether something happens inside that period and yeah. use stamps when it makes more sense because this, this event happened at that time. So, I guess yeah, one more fix and one more relative. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, 
That's about it. There's, oh, the, the other cool, one of the cool sections of the chapter is this thing on resampling and frequency conversion, which I thought was really neat. Um, turns out resampling, uh, there's a function called resample, uh, which as you'll see, is kind of a grouping thing. It's like a special group by for time. Um, mm. So it's kind of oh. cool. Like if you have a daily thing, you can resample it to be monthly, you know, and you can do some processing. Like you want the mean, you want the uh, open, high, low, close, whatever kind of aggregate you want to do to that, to all those That's kind of cool. inside that month or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty neat. That's the other thing I took away from this chapter. It's some, a tool that I will definitely use that I never knew about. Okay. Um, I have not even gone through that, but definitely I'll root through the, to the end of the chapter. I think it will be useful in, you know, yeah. All right, yeah. cool. Cool stuff. So thank you. Um it's a real, um like that. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, so I'm glad we were able to release meeting and go through the chapter in some fashion so that we don't get bogged, you know, get delayed too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a good idea, I think, just to say to skip this to the next week, you know, to have someone who present again, even though but having just a kind of discussion also help. Yeah, that's good. All right. So thank you all for joining and we'll see you next week. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, yes, sir. Bye everyone. See you then.